This video is designed to help you start a vegetable farming business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a vegetable farming business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful vegetable farming business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. It is advisable to always check the kind of vegetables you will like to venture into. While looking for the one you want to venture into, it is important to consider the ones that can easily be sold out around your locality. Vegetables can include artichoke, eggplant, asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, Spanish vegetable, okro, known as ladies' fingers, or okro and scientifically known as Abel Mosca Siculentis, green vegetable, cauliflower, etc. There are various types of fruits and vegetables to select from. Deciding on the right one will lead to a successful vegetable farming business. You should try and find out about all these around your area like, is there a high demand for this crop? How resistant is the crop to diseases and pests, the risks of planting the crop, and the quantity of crop to produce first? Then you can decide on the type of vegetable farming you want to engage in. Get a suitable farmland. Finding suitable farmland is essential. When starting this kind of farming business, you should also try and know about different kinds of soil and their properties, in order to choose the best soil suitable for planting. It is important to consider the following, while choosing land for your vegetable farming, which includes its soil type, the topography of the land, demographic, its access to sunlight and water. Loamy or humus soils is regarded to be the best soil type for vegetable planting, due to high nutrients present in it, that helps the proper growth of vegetables. This type of farming can also be planted at home, if you have enough space for it but you can use a small or large area of land to start up the farming business, depending on your scale of operation. Get the necessary equipment. Getting the necessary equipment for your vegetable farming depends on the scale of your operation. Your scale of operation will determine whether you need to get farming tools and machines such as planters, tractors, manure spreader, capable backies, etc. Farming equipment helps to increase the productivity of your farm. If you are planning on small scale operation, you may consider farming tools such as hoe, plow, and other garden equipment. Startup Capital There are several ways you can raise up your startup capital. But if you have a only have a small amount of funds, you can start small, and expand when you start making profits. If you are planning to start in a bigger way and don't have the money, you can apply for a loan from the bank. Getting suitable land for this farming business will take a lot of expenses, the seeds are expensive, and you will also need to buy some additional materials, like pesticides, fertilizers, watering systems and more. Pest and Diseases Control Vegetable crops can be affected by pests and diseases. Therefore it is important to check on your crops for pests and diseases. Applying a pest and diseases control depends on the level it has affected, or the level of the damage to the crop. You can check on the crop to, to see if there is any presence of diseases and pests, by setting a trap for a particular pest and then check on it regularly. Among the traps you can use are a pheromone trap, a hormone that attracts male insects, this serves as a trap for pests like a diamond back moth, and sticky yellow traps that serve as a trap for insects like aphids or thrips. Traps help the grower discover the presence and indication levels of pests on the farm. Pest and disease control can be done with the use of resistant varieties, including biological controls, cultivation, trap cropping, chemical application, management, and cultural methods. Harvesting Harvesting your vegetable crops should be one of the things to consider when choosing to grow vegetables. It may require hiring laborers, depending on the type of vegetable crop you decide to plant. Your vegetable crop can be harvested with the following means, harvesting by machinery. Harvesting your crop with a machine does not require many laborers, but it is more expensive. Such crops include corn, carrots, processing tomatoes, and potatoes. Harvesting by hand. This for vegetables that require few laborers, it can be managed by your family members, depending on the size of your operation, also the perishability of the crop should be considered, and how fast it needs to be harvested after it matures, an example of such crops are pumpkins. Some crops require pruning and harvesting by hand continuously, and this type of crop may yield for a long time, examples of such crops are squash, snow peas, eggplant and asparagus. Vegetable crops growing Planting and harvesting are not so difficult compared to other food crops. It is important to have your buyers ready to buy the vegetables once it has been harvested. Vegetables are perishable and storing it for a long time can affect its quality. The next part of the video is not specific to the vegetable farming business. Nevertheless, 
This knowledge is essential for success in the vegetable farming business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful vegetable farming business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money. In any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. 
Here is a list of items, you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3, this is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection, will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a vegetable farming business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free vegetable farming business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.